Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, up we go. Hopefully it doesn't collapse on the lift. It's making crunchy. Oh Jesus. Ah. Uh, Should I go back down? Maybe there's another spot you can lift it from. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's giving way. Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is my latest purchase and a massive, massive mistake. It is a 2004 Subaru Baja, and it is the holy grail of Subaru Bajas because it is the 2.5 liter turbo engine powered one with a manual transmission in a goofy little unibody car pickup truck that Subaru made, and I've always wanted one, and the prices have just exploded lately. If you look on Bring a Trailer, nice examples are bringing nearly $20,000, so I thought I got a fantastic deal paying, well, half that, $9,000 for this one showing 89,000 miles, but that turned out not to be true in so many levels. The mileage, uh, the condition, everything, it is a total disaster, but the Subaru itself, sales-wise, was a disaster to begin with, so well, what do I expect? Now, the Baja was unveiled in the early 2000s after Subaru's success with the Outback, building a lifted, cladded station wagon. You never would have thought would have taken off, but it was huge all over the United States. You saw them everywhere, and Subaru thought, well, let's build more lifted, cladded things. So they made a sedan version, and then this version that came out, and well, nobody bought it. I mean, the bed, it was so small because they kept it a four-door vehicle to have some usable interior, but the bed itself, well, I mean, it's like three feet long. You could fold it down and have one of those little uh, cages that fold over to give you a five-foot bed, but there was a lot of sacrifices with that as well, and nobody knew what to do with these things. So really, they were a complete sales flop, but like a lot of flops, like the Mark IV Toyota Super that nobody bought, the Acura NSX that nobody bought, they kind of became cult classics, and now they have exploded in value in comparison to, say, an Outback or an old legacy sedan or something like that. And these turbo versions with the stick are very, very hard to find in nice condition. And I did not find well, I did find a turbo stick, but I didn't find one in nice condition, unfortunately. So this was a big flop for Subaru. They only made it for a few years, and they had a factory in Indiana set up just for this that they gave up on and started building Toyota Camrys. But really, the Baja was certainly ahead of its time, inspired from the Brat, obviously, of the 70s and 80s. But nowadays, you have the Honda Ridgeline that's doing well, and you have the new Hyundai Santa Cruz truck that people are raving about, and of course the Ford Maverick, which I would love to have a Ford Maverick, a hybrid 40 mile per gallon, small pickup truck, unibody car-ish thing, uh, but you can't get one right now. It's like the car of the year, but Ford can't build them. It's kind of like the 1965 Ford Mustang has come out and they're only making a thousand of them this year because they can't. It, it makes no sense to even bother unveiling the truck when you can't build it, but anyway, that's a tangent here. So the Baja for me is the next best thing that I could find for now. Really, I wasn't looking for it. It popped up at auction and my friend Urination Bob saw it and said, hey, you want to bid on this thing? Sight unseen. I have no idea. 89,000 miles. Looks really nice in the pictures. And it's like, well, yeah, they go for about 20 with those mileage. So if I can get it for half that, may have a bad head gasket, may have some other issues. I can't lose, right? Oh, oh yeah, I can lose. So today I'm going to give you a tour of this Baja Turbo, why I wanted one and why this one is a total disaster. We're gonna take it up to the car wizards and check it over, but I think he's just gonna laugh at me. But before we tour this weird Subaru and see the real ugly underneath, I'd like to thank ShipStation for sponsoring today's video. ShipStation is the leading web-based order management and shipping software designed to make retailers exceptionally efficient at processing, fulfilling, and shipping their e-commerce orders. I know from experience that starting to sell your own products online can seem really daunting, frustrating, and time-consuming, so I really wish I had known about ShipStation years ago because it makes selling just about any kind of product online so much easier. Even if you've been doing it for years like me and you're kind of set in your ways, you certainly should look into ShipStation as shipping delays, supply shortages, and huge online demand was probably a mess for you last year. Now you're ringing in the new year with impatient customers, returns, and expensive shipping rates, so it's time to switch to a shipping solution that can handle it all painlessly. With so many options for carriers and tons of factors, it's hard to figure out the best rates, so ShipStation optimizes all of it for you to save time and money. And with more people shopping online than ever, especially 
especially given the world we live in today, you can trust ShipStation and get back to the stuff you want to do, like growing your business. ShipStation easily lets you import orders from every sales channel, such as Amazon, Etsy, or your own site, and automate all the shipping tasks. ShipStation also works with all major carriers, both international and local, including FedEx, USPS, and UPS, and you get the same discounted rates that are usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. It's no wonder 98% of companies using ShipStation for a year keep using it. It's just good stuff. And Hoobies Garage subscribers get a special offer. Just go to ShipStation.com slash Hoobies to get a free trial. That's 60 days free at ShipStation.com slash Hoobies. Make ship happen. And speaking of ship happens, Ugh. So this Baja is an early one, so it still rocks the two-tone cladding, which I love. Pearl white with a silver cladding all around gives it an off-roady look, and you see it has the scoop because it has an intercooler with a 2.5-liter turbo engine, about 230 horsepower, 0 to 60, about 7 seconds, which was really, really good back in the day, and it is fun to drive in that respect. You see the funky roof line here with a tiny sunroof, the roof rack, and then it goes down with these sport bars into the teeny tiny rear bed. I mean, this thing is so tiny, I don't know what you would haul in it. Uh, I guess a few bales of hay, but not very much. And I have no idea what this plastic cover is for other than taking up more bed space, but it is a little bitty mini truck, which is very, very cool in my eyes. The tailgate folds down just like a normal tailgate. And actually, you can see the license plate actually folds down as well, which when you have the gate folded down, they can still see your license plate, which is really cool and handy. And I just broke something, a rubber mount just fell off, but anyway, that's the least of this car's worries. Okay, fold back down. Here we go. And as you can see from the outside, this thing is in very, very nice condition. Really weird with the fuel door, they decided to clad it so it kind of clashes, but whatever. Overall, really, really nice shape. Showing only 89,000 miles on the odometer, but the Carfax proved that to be a lie. Something I didn't check before I bought it, unfortunately. It's been rolled back 100,000 miles. I discovered that after I purchased it, which is unfortunate, but then I thought, well, that's probably why I got it so cheap. And overall, it still looked really, really nice on arrival, so I wasn't that upset. The only thing that's really weird about this Subaru, something that's absolutely disgusting, some crazy, insane person sat in this car after it was detailed for auction and decided it was a good place to clip their fingernails, and they just clipped them all over the seat and all over the floorboard. I mean, what kind of psycho detailer, car dealer, I don't know, who would do that? I didn't know what it was at first, and I picked one of them up, and I went, Gah! but anyway, it's there. That can be vacuumed up. That's not a big deal. Unfortunately, the big deal happened when I opened the rear doors. You can see up front, it looks like a normal Subaru, but you have a stick shift with a turbo engine and a little pickup truck. It's awesome. You have a back seat, which is weird because it's not a full back seat. You have a center console in the middle with cup holders rather than have, well, three people that could fit in the back in a pinch. I don't really understand that, but that's what they chose to do. This also folds down. You can see there's a little pass-through in the cabin, kind of like an avalanche, except the glass doesn't come down. It's just that little pass-through for poles or wood boards or something. But when I opened this rear door and then I looked down, I went, oh no. Oh, oh no, no, no. This is a patch panel. It is a total plastic that's been glued on to hide what I imagine is a rust hole. And you can see the rust is radiating out, hiding conveniently under this cladding. And I thought, well, that's not bad. Hopefully it's not as bad on the other side. Went over to the other side and, well, it's worse. It, it, it's, it's much, much worse. So that's complete Swiss cheese there. And then when you look underneath, it's, it's a big problem. Yeah, just a quick glance, this rocker is completely separated from the frame there, which I suppose could be fixed. But then, when you look at the rear subframe, <sighs> yeah, here we go. It looks like it was recovered from the Titanic and then painted with four, five, ten coats of Rust-Oleum to send on its merry way. It does not look good, unfortunately. I really don't like rust at all, and this one's uh, looking really bad, but it may not be that bad once we get it up in the lift, so that's why I'm gonna take it up to the Car Wizards. We're gonna give it a once over and see really how bad it is underneath, among other issues, which it, it, it does have some issues. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cladding. Cladding hides hides a lot. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Plenty of pep. This thing is really fun. It is a shame that it is so crusty underneath and with the odometer roll back, and you're probably thinking, well, Tyler, go after the dealer that did this to you. They did you wrong. They're scammers. They're horrible. And they actually really did nothing wrong. It would have been nice if they had mentioned that the odometer had been rolled back in some kind of disclosure, but with a car being over 10 years old, it's exempt from odometer reporting, so they're not obligated to. They don't have to. They may have not even pulled the car fax because it was just a cheap trade-in. It was at a new car dealer. Also, it's not a new car dealer's job to hold a wholesale buyer's hand to tell them everything is wrong. It's up to you to go in person and inspect the car, make sure it's what you want and the most you want to pay uh, before you bid. Or if you're bidding sight unseen like I did, well, you just gotta realize that there's a chance it could be very, very bad, especially in today's market where every single used car that a dealer can keep, they're, they're keeping to make money on it. If it's a good car, if it's something that can be reconditioned to a good car, they're keeping it and they're selling it on the lot themselves. They're not sending it to auctions. So the only thing really at auctions right now are complete and total turds, you know, like this. But this turd still has some get up and go. That 2.5 turbo engine is, is great. The only thing I know that's wrong with it is I think there's a valve cover gasket leaking or a head gasket leaking oil because it's getting on the exhaust and there's a oily smoky smell. When I was parked at the gas station, it was emanating from under the hood as well, which was quite embarrassing, but it seems to run great. Nearly 200,000 miles though, not 89,000 miles. And now we're getting up to highway speed with a Swiss cheese rear suspension. And you would never, never know. Maybe it can be fixed. We'll see. Okay, I may have spoken a little too soon because the shocks are definitely blown on this thing. I go over bumps and it bounces like crazy. And the steering wheel, um, yeah. The car's not doing very much with all that play. Not good. It's a Baja. Wow, it looks cool. I've gone Japanese, which I haven't done in a very, very long time. Mm. Turbo Stick Baja, the Holy Grail. Oh my goodness, these are hard to find. They are very hard to find, and this one, well, it's the best of the bunch, and, well, of course, it has some issues. Yeah, minor issues. Minor issues? Yeah, suspension, some leaks, so. It looks nice. Yeah, it does look nice. All right, let's get it on the lift. All right, I'm just gonna say right now, I'm not married to this thing, Wizard. I will trade you, well, anything for it. Right now, you want the Mercedes? I, I'll take that. Trade you straight off. How about the Nissan Leaf? Uh, the, not the Leaf, the, the Scion. I'll trade you the Scion for it. I, Scion? Scion, right now, yeah. Let's look it over before we make a deal. It does look the part. It's beautiful, it's nice. yes. But uh, I know the Scion's perfect. This one, this one is, is something. Is something? So, well, pop the hood. Your Scion doesn't have a turbo and an intercooler. No, it doesn't. 2.5 liter. It is smoking a little bit like a valve cover gasket. Right. Or a head gasket. But looks pretty tidy, huh? Is it overheating? Not at all. Not in the slightest. Not at all? No. That's, yeah, it looks tidy under here. The odometer is showing 90,000 miles on it, uh, but the actual mileage is 180,000 miles. What's all that? Uh, in? I have no idea. That's a little addition to the upper radiator hose. It's like a couple of temperature sensors for some reason, or I don't know. Here's some oil gunk. Like someone tried to fill it and spilled it all over the place. Oh. Maybe that's your oil leak. So it's know. using oil or low in oil and they were just sloppy? Could be. It could be the same person that uh, decided to clip their fingernails into the passenger seat. Fingernails? There's fingernail clippings all on the passenger side of the car. Right. It's, uh, it's disgusting. Yep. It's got a, one of those eBay chips on it to give it more power. Well, that explains why it feels so fast. It's not hooked up, though. Well, that explains nothing, then. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It is fast and, and very fun. I've always wanted one of these, and uh, unfortunately, 
Well, anyway, just just keep inspecting. Okay, yes. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Everything looks okay here, except for whatever that is. It does look very clean. Mm-hmm. Kind of crusty on the brakes, but... Yeah, it's been sitting for a while. That looks pretty rusty in there. We'll get it on the lift here in a minute and look at that. Oh, uh, it's, it's surface rust. I mean, surface rust? Scion. Scion. I'll take the Scion. Let's right take a look first. I'm not shaking any hands. <laughs> okay. What's the back seat look like? Oh, you are going to do it, aren't you? Yeah, it's locked. Yeah. What's that? Uh... You know, just just sound deadening. Sound deadening? Yes. It looks like they're patched over a hole where you can it, put your fist through it. Well, it's just sound deadening. There's not much insulation on these cars, you know? So they were helping out in that particular spot with a piece of, of plastic or something, you know? Looks like they glued it on with silicone or something. Yeah. You can haul hay or junk or whatever in this little bitty thing. Farm animals? Yes, farm animals. I suppose you could. They might jump out. What is that? Right. It beats me. No step. No, <laughs> no. loads on no, it. Don't, don't stand on it. Yes. Oh. Obviously don't stand on it. <laughs> it also says don't put your load on it. Oh. Where'd the gas door go? That was there when I got it. Did it really just fly off on the highway drive up here? It did. Well, and it was cladding. It was silver to match the car and now this uh, uh oh well oh well anyway oh well. all right let's just get this over with let's go up in the air okay <sighs> yeah oh my yeah oh, wow. okay. okay up we go hopefully it doesn't collapse on the lift it's <sighs> up we go all right <laughs> trade you right now come on uh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> hey, this is not good. <laughs> what was that? It's so rusted back there, it won't even hold the car. What kind of car did you bring me? Did it just kind of poke through? Yeah. Uh, Do you want me to keep going? Why not? It's up to you. It's your car. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Okay. I'll keep going. It's making crunchy. Oh, Jesus. Uh. Should I go back down? Maybe there's another spot you can lift it from. It's, yeah, it's giving way. Oh, dear. What in the world? I, I think that uh, lift point is... is uh... Yeah, it specifically has an arrow right there. That's where you put the, the arm. I can try right here, maybe. Oh, my goodness. Where'd you get this thing? I, I at a dealer auction, you know, just looking at pictures. Pictures? Yeah. Wow. I paid nine thousand dollars for it. <laughs> nine thousand dollars. Yep. Yep. Well, let's see if this works. That seems better. So. Let's start up here. The heat shield. I can put my fingers through it. Well, that doesn't hurt anything. No, I guess it doesn't. This structure here is starting to come apart. Oh, so it's not just the rear subframe, it's the front, huh? No. Oh, okie dokie. <laughs> There's pieces of the car literally coming off of it. There's the sway bar link broken. Ah, well that may explain why it feels all sway. I'm afraid to even walk under this thing. It's uh, something, isn't it? Yeah, well, let's do it. No serious leaks, really. Yeah, I was smelling and seeing oil smoke, though. So your steering rack, does, does your steering is actually just being held on by chunks of rust. Ah, well, there's a lot of play in the steering as well. Oh, really? Yeah, about that much. 
Well, that's probably why. The whole structure is about to give. Hmm. I probably wouldn't drive this anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not getting the Scion for this. <laughs> We're not even done yet. <laughs> We're just getting started. Oh okay. My Valve cover gaskets are leaking. Yeah. It's not a huge deal, but... The head gaskets aren't. No, they're not. Must have been done before. There's something, wizard. The engine's worth something. Yeah. This has been, exhaust is held up by a clothes hanger. Great. Wonderful. Oh my goodness. Luckily the drive shaft's okay. Exhaust is decent. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Oh that's that's still hanging, huh? Uh, look look at the uh, the flex in that as we stand under this car with this hole. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the side that we didn't correct. This side's on a uh, suspension component now because it all just totally caved in. Look at that. Um uh, Whoa. Whoa. The whole back half of this car is literally about to collapse. Look how it how it just kinda oh. Is that the floor? That's no, that's that's the frame rail, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know you're gonna have to sweep all that up. I I it it's it's a never ending Look, there's styrofoam. What the hell? Well oh, that's probably factory actually. I know, but, but it's just the fact that we can now see it. It shouldn't be seen. It, 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 <laughs> You're going to make it break in half. Stop. It's, it's, okay. That too. Yeah. Oh, that, that that's paper there. You paid $9,000 uh, for this? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I sure did. I, I sure, sure did. You did yourself this time. Yeah. Well, uh, if you'd like a piece of a Subaru Baja, huh? uh, I can start selling them. Look at the brake lines. I bet if I touch it, it would just break. Don't, well, don't touch it. <laughs> and this side, this side is the better side, but still, oh. Oh my goodness. That's, okay. So right now, it's this little thing here is what's holding. Wait, wait a minute. <gasps> Okay, I'm putting it back down now before we get killed. Okay, well, the, the back. Okay. I Why is it blue? They've, they've painted it several times. Look, the rust is eating through even that. Yeah. yeah. So that's the rear subframe, and I can poke through it with my finger. Oh, This yep. thing must have come from New York or something. Yeah. Yeah, I just made that hole much, much larger. Oh, my goodness. This thing's unusable. Just like Ralph Nader said, unsafe at any speed. I just drove it 80 miles an hour up here, uh, 30 miles. Wow. <laughs> I, I really recommend that you don't drive at home. I mean, I've had a couple of rusty cars. There was one on car issues, the M3, which is now going to be something you're going to do with, but it held itself up on the lift. It was ruined by the floors, but it wasn't structurally compromised like right. this. The LeBaron, we dug a hole and we buried it because it was so rusty, once again, floors, but it wasn't structurally compromised. And that was a crappy K car. It wasn't, it wasn't dangerous. Right. It was just rusty. This, this is, this is outright dangerous. I could take this thing back to the auction and dump it, but then I would be, I would be sending somebody off in a death trap. You could, you could be putting them in a coffin. That was my plan at first to take this back to the auction from which it came and make it somebody else's problem. But this this is this is outright dangerous. It is. And if somebody bought this and then didn't realize it, they they, they could die. So I'm gonna have to junk it. That's what I would recommend that you do. Because the money that you're losing off of what you paid for it, you could lose tenfold that somebody well, it's a wholesale auction. It's as is. I mean, it's just karma and conscious and all that stuff. Because this thing oh, wow. would still sell at auction, and people knew about the rest. Somebody would still give me five grand for it, but I don't. I don't think I can do that. Well, anyway, uh, 
thank the sponsors of today's video. Uh, Hoobie's Garage t-shirts would definitely be a big help right now. We have new ones on uh, on the website, uh, uh, Superbird one, and Hoobie's Garage stickers, which if you have a rust spot on your car, uh, a sticker would be a great thing to cover it up, but it's not big enough to cover up the rust, no. the rust on here. And that, I wasn't planning on doing a merch plug today, but it just spontaneously came to me. I'll buy two shirts and a sticker to chip in. Uh, thank you. Holy moly, this is... This one takes the cake, I think, for all the hoopies you've ever bought, as far as being disastrously unusable. A surprise. And it's the first hoopty that I've bought, proper hoopty, in quite a while, because there's been a lot of exotics and things, and this is how I ring in the new year. Great job. Good, yeah, golf clap. Thank you for watching this. Let's, let's just end this. Holy crap.